right. We are at the third statement that John makes as it relates to the young men. And he simply says, I have written to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. When we look at this particular statement now, it is clear and easy for us to see the stages that John uh, presents regarding the young men. One of the things we want to keep in mind is that these believers who have now overcome are at a place where they are living out the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the key. They are not just walking around saying, I have his presence in me. They are not simply claiming to be something, but instead they are making a statement. And the statement is they are making use of his presence in them to the point that John says that they have overcome the wicked one. One of the things I want you to notice is the terminology that John uses. And notice what he does not say before you look at what he says. Notice what he doesn't say. He does not say they have overcome temptation. Is that in y'all's Bible? That's not what he says. He doesn't say they've overcome temptation. He says they have overcome the wicked one. So that means that John is telling us that he has overcome the personal devil himself. Everybody with me? See, that's, that's powerful, okay? Simply because if he had said they had overcome uh, temptation, we would still be at a struggle. But that's not, what, that's not what he says in the text, okay? They have overcome the tempter, the personal one, the devil himself. Let's go to what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ma'am, okay, Ephesians 6 and 12. Now, th this is important because later on, uh, we're going to see why John didn't say they've overcome temptation, okay? As powerful as temptation is, that's not Satan's mission. All right. But I can't tell you his mission until we get to the end, Okay? Listen to what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. You know you have grown spiritually when you can acknowledge that you have overcome the wicked one. Not, not temptation. Many of us uh, fight situations that we fail to understand Satan's method, his technique, and how he moves and operates. Now notice, once again, the terminology that John uses. He didn't say they had come face to face with the wicked one. That's not what's in the text. What's in the text is one word, overcome. I need you to write that down in your notes. For those of you who've just come in, we are at 1 John chapter 2, verses 13b and 14b. And in this section, this is where John lays out addressing levels of spiritual growth and we are now dealing with the young men the word overcome comes from a greek word which simply means to win a 
victory to win a victory that's what it means so that means and I want us to as I teach this I want us to look at ourselves and not just at the word am I making sense I don't want you to see what John calls the young men as being overcomers I want us to see ourselves as overcomers because until we realize the same thing that they have done, we can do. Okay? So John calls them what? Overcomers. Now here's the unique thing. That word overcome is a present tense verb. You hearing me? And what it simply means then is that when a person overcomes a situation, that portion of their lives victory is theirs is nothing Satan can do to undo what you've already overcome you got me I didn't say he couldn't come back at you but you have overcome whatever that is okay we're going to take a moment now and I want to walk you through a few passages of scripture, seven promises that the word of God uh, connects with us being overcomers, okay? And the very first one, and they're all in Revelation, is in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. Listen to what it says. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the what? Paradise of God. So that's a promise. Does everybody see what he promises? See, but you got to, you must qualify to become a what? Overcomer. Stay in Revelation chapter 2. Let's go now to verse 11. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. <laughs> ah, see, these are promises now, but what must, let, let's, let's, let's stop right there. You've already died once. For the believer, the second death is your step to hit into his presence. Got me? So this is why sometimes people don't understand us as Christians because we don't view the death of a person who is saved. That doesn't mean, I put, now let, me, let me correct something. That doesn't mean you don't grieve. Doesn't mean you don't hurt. But it does mean that you have sense enough to know that there is a better place than where we are that's been prepared. And if that's the case, then that ought to be everybody's goal in here. Amen. Who, who wants to stay here in the struggle? No. Hello? <laughs> no, no, nobody wants to stay here in the struggle, okay? Especially when you get, I'm, I'm ahead of myself, deep in the word, you recognize that some things that God is going to give you, you, you know it's yours. So you got two promises already laid out. In Revelation chapter 2, the first one is in verse 7. The second one is in verse 11. I mean, the 7. Now let's go to 11 for the third one. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Now give me 17. Watch it. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manners to eat. And I will give him a white stone and on the stone a new name written which no one knows except him who receives it. Woo! We, we got to know without a doubt that where we go in heaven is real and things are prepared for us. There's seven of them now. You know seven is the number of what? Completion. So you got verse seven. 
you got verse 11, you got verse 17. Now let's go to verse 26. He who, o- he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Whew. Now let's jump out of Revelation chapter 2 and go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. All of these are promises if we accept the responsibility of understanding the power of becoming a what? Overcomer. That's the key. Okay? Then in chapter 3, verse 12. No, verse 5. Did I, I did 5, didn't I? 12. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him. My new name. Every one of these are promises predicated on being a what? Overcomer. Then last, verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, and I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So these are seven promises. Okay? Okay? To overcomers in the book of Revelation. Okay. So John in the text declares. They have overcome whom? The wicked one. When John uses the term wicked one. He is speaking simply of another name. For the name devil. Or Satan. He simply calls him the wicked one. Let me take you. To 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. And John's going to give us some more descriptive concepts of him. He says, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned. From the beginning, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I hope y'all are getting this, okay? So the wicked one tries to seduce the young men. That means then that according to John's writings, the wicked one, the devil, came up before the young men. I don't want to scare you, don't want to hurt your feelings, but I do need you to recognize that there comes a moment in your walk with God, you can just about determine your level of strength and growth based on things Satan brings before you. If he can knock you down with a lie, he got you. You you hearing me? So for those of you who have grown past the lie, you you can at least say, uh, I'm growing. But there are a whole lot of folks sitting in here now. And some of y'all still let little things of that nature. You track them down. You trace Try to figure out who said what. And, and that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. You, 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 you got to get to the point. You, you prepare to fight big dogs. Boy, y'all. Let me take you to James chapter 1 verse 14. One of, one of Satan's primary purposes is to do something. Now, this is, this is not his ultimate. I'm going to explain that later on. He says, 
James says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Now, you put a pen there because there are some things we put on Satan and we fail to realize he has an ultimate mission. Okay? And that mission is not to tempt you. <laughs> you got me? He's got a deeper purpose behind what he's doing. Listen to, listen to, listen to what James says. But each one is tempted when he is what? Drawn away by his own desires and what? Enticed. Got me? So he already knows how to trip immature Christians up. Because he comes at them through things that he knows that they desire. You, you are all right until you made a commitment to go on a diet. The moment you acknowledged, I'm going to go on a diet, you, you've been passing the TV set all week long. And all of a sudden, on that particular, now you're you, you in the kitchen and you see the banana split. You 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 see it. I mean, they, they, they got a big colored picture on the screen. And you, commercial been on for God knows how long. But you, it never came to you. Okay? Because, see, he knows exactly what it takes to get us to back up. See? It's when you make that commitment. Okay? Now, that's trivial. That's not what Satan was doing with the young men. Ah, check your notes now. What was the first thing I told you about them? He says, I've written to you because you are what? No, the first one. Strong. Strong. And then secondly, he says, I'm written to you because what? The word what? Abides in you. So, so they had two major qualities going for them. See, so Satan had to go back to the drawing board because what he would have normally come at them with would not work. Totally move them off base, okay? Satan then comes at us and his mission is different. Let me take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3, 4, and 5. All right, now before I read this, I'm going to say this again. He does, he wants to tempt us, but that's not his ultimate purpose. Got me? His ultimate purpose is to work through a religious system. I hope y'all get, see, you got to connect what John speaks to these young men about. One was the word. See, so Satan knew that he couldn't come to them with little bitty things because they were rooted in the word. Watch, listen to what Paul says. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh watch this now for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Wow. Got me? See, you, you, you got to understand, he does not want you rooted in this. That's his mission. See, if you can't grow out of dealing with temptation, that means 
you still wrestling, and I hope y'all stay with me now, with something that you have not totally surrendered and given to the Lord. Did all y'all just hear what I, you, 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 you uh, all right, suppose, all right, since, since all y'all sitting up here looking all holy, let me, let me just use an example, okay. Let's say that every one of us in here had a gambling and a drinking problem. All of us. So the power just bent over. She just she, she, she just lost it. She had went over like that. Here's my point. You've heard people say, I, 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 that I don't drink anymore. I've been set free. That person has grown in the word to where when Satan came before them, they were so rooted, it, 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 it vanished. It's gone. But there are Christians who go over and over and over and over and over again over periods of time. They may go three months, no drink. Two months, some of us, yeah, no, no, you ain't. Now, if, you just, if, it, if it's a day, you really got, you really at that level, okay? You still there, okay? So Satan is smart to know you haven't shaken that thing. And, and you can't shake it by talking good. You see, again, Satan knows to just say something and you know within yourself you just talking. He's sitting. He, he's sitting waiting. Am I, does everybody understand? Okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Listen to what Paul says. Put on the what? Whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of whom? The devil. See, for, first of all, Christians don't dress. I, I, I'll go there in a minute. <laughs> For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against what? Rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness of hosts and wickedness in heavenly places. Here's the point I want you to understand. We can't dress in the whole armor when we don't view our spiritual walk as having a need to have on the armor. You, you hear me? When our focus is on what we got on for Sunday. It's what, what, what are we wearing? That's, that's, and, and please, y'all, I'm going in my grave teaching y'all this. I would much rather have a church where folk are casual and comfortable and the spirit is right than a decked out group of folk with hats and gloves and heels and matching stockings and everybody full of hair. And that's what generally happens because the, the, the issue is on what I'm wearing and, and Paul says put on the whole armor. And please understand, I'm not against dressing. I'm not against dressing, but I do think as a race of people, we, we've gone to the extreme. I think we spend too much time trying to look a certain way outwardly and don't do nothing inwardly to walk like a child of God. Woo! Whew. First Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. Listen to what he says. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Let's stay, let's stop right there. Let's, let's stop. Let's, let's just stop. Let's stop. I'm trying to. Show you what, what the church is doing. Right now, now y'all, you may not like my statement, but I got I'm about to make it plain, okay? 
when Paul made that statement, we, we don't see from a doctrinal perspective of the truth of God's word. I saw on, on Facebook the other day, and, and you know you can tell, you can tell a woman wearing a tuxedo that just some things ain't going to change. I don't, I don't care if she go flat. It just is, it's, it's, a, it's a certain, you just, you can look at a woman dressed like a man and say that's, that's a woman. I mean, you can just tell, all right? And, and the church, they, they were outside, not beautiful decorations for the wedding. She married another woman, okay? And, and it was on Facebook, and, and the preacher was standing there. That's what Paul talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we, we go, here's what we do. We gotten blind and quiet, yeah. like y'all just got just then, because it's like y'all, what I'm trying to show us and, and teach us as your pastor, I have to make sure that we got written documentation so that when we pull out who we are, there are certain things I don't have to do. But the church is turning a deaf ear and, and it's quiet to certain things. And, and so that's when, when Paul made that, that that's, that, that's demonic spirits. That, that, that we as a body or baptized believers got to be so rooted and grounded in the word. Now that don't mean you walk around acting like you're holier than thou and better than other folk. That ain't what I'm trying to teach. You, you missed the whole, whole boat if, I, if, if that's, the, that's not what. We, you have to be kind to all people. And, and respect and love all folks. So that's the missing element that many Christians have. We, we get holy and think, you wrong, I'm right. Wrong concept. Okay? First, li listen, listen to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. This is what, this is, this is what Satan does. He, he gets in people and use them as instruments, and there are folk in the body of Christ right now will believe just by any lie you come before them. Especially if they say it right. Just straight out lies. You got people who, are, who sit at home angry and won't go to nobody's church, all them hypocrites, but they'll sit and write a check weekly to folk and send off and get Stuff. Yeah, holy water, blessed salt, you know, uh, magical lights. And the, the, the word said if I did this. And, and those are lies, but you cannot. And, and, and listen to me, you, you got to be so careful in this day and age. Because if I'm telling you these things, you ain't got no business in somebody's line talking about, they, they told me to bring $300 in. And I get a healing. Now, come on now, come on now. That I'm not against God healing people, but what if you broke and you need a healing from the Lord? And, and I'm up here talking about bring, bring, bring me a all right, fifty fifty dollars in this line, a hundred dollars in line. Come on now, and you broke. So what gonna happen to your healing? But you see what happens to us as a body of baptized believers. And, and, and this is what's so unique about the young men. They were strong and they were in the word and they were able to work with strangers when it came into the body of Christ. But the church don't know the word so anybody can come in. And so we just sit on the pew and whatever you ain't heard. Now she went over there and sent $5 and look, 20 was in the mailbox. Come on now. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. Now listen to me. I'm now going to show you something unique about the young men. Okay? 
Listen to what Paul says. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and to the world. So these young men have come to understand the cross, what it means, and they've been able to activate their faith through what Jesus has already done. The problem with Christians, we don't really know what the purpose of the cross is. If we really did, I wouldn't have to stand on Sundays and say, will somebody say amen? Yeah. Come on now. Because when you walk through the door, you just shouting because what? I got salvation. I entered because I'm saved. How did I get saved? Because he suffered, bled, and died. Rose again, and now I got salvation. I was on my way to hell, but I'm on my way to heaven now. Might be broke. Hello? But that, that, that's neither here nor there. I'm talking about what? Salvation. And does everybody understand? Because see, Satan will come after things. But what? guess what he can't take? He can't take your salvation. That's yours. You got him. You're in a relationship with the Lord. And you're on your way to glory. Why? Because you understand the cross. But guess what? We can't, get a, we can't have a good church until... Choir friend is singing, sometimes they sweating to death. Because our minds are not where worship ought to be. You, you are a worshiper. You ought to enter that door with an attitude. If it had not been for the cross, what had not been for him shedding his blood, dying for me, I couldn't even worship. That's enough to shout off all by itself. So the young men understood the meaning of the cross and its purpose, and they were able to activate what? Their faith. Paul is telling us this is how they became overcomers of the wicked one. Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. The cross indicates two things. Let me take you to Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Listen to, what, listen to what he says. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements, he offered a sacrifice. And what, what my destination was, Got clear. I was once guilty, but now I've been declared innocent. <laughs> I was born a loser, but now I'm a winner. Poor y'all. <laughs> yes, sir. That, that, that right there is enough to just make you... Step back and look at yourself and go, wait, 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 wait a minute. Mm, mm, mm. And what I like about him, he paid for it all at once. It, it, he ain't coming back for no part-time payment. He paid for my mess in full. Can I really mess with y'all mind for a moment? He knows what you're going to do wrong tomorrow. You haven't gotten to tomorrow, but tomorrow's sin and wrongdoing is already covered. <laughs> now, that doesn't give us the right to deliberately do wrong, but that's enough to make you holler. Whew. Here's the second thing. It's right there in the Colossians. That's, that's the first one in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Now look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Watch this. Having disarmed principalities and what? Powers. 
Woo. So Satan was stripped. See, he had the upper hand at one point. But when we became born again, when Jesus actually died on the cross, he granted us an opportunity. See, you don't never fight for victory. You fight from victory. You have to see yourself in the position of being a victor. Boy, y'all. Listen to this. Listen to this. The death of Christ on the cross left Satan with no authority. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> are y'all hearing me? The death of Christ on the cross left Satan with no authority. The rascal got no power over you. Now this is where we this is where we fall short. I, I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead of myself. It's something that John declares about these young men that we miss. Okay? Now, if that be the case, here's the problem. Pull it up, Sister Paul. I hope this makes sense. Believers are to see themselves as not only in conflict with the enemy, but as having perceived the victory in Christ's name and by his power. Am I making sense to you now? See, some of us, when we are in a struggle, we talk struggle language. Got me? But there are moments that you got to change your language from being in a conflict. And you got to start realizing, I got victory. And I know it's rough. Trust me. Been there. If you've been living, you've been in them. All of us been in the situation where the, the, the conflict looked like it was no ever come to an end. But sometimes it lingers because our language hasn't changed. How you saw yourself. You know, I'm, you know, you, I tell you all the time, I hate to ask some people some things because... Um, mm, They, they got to go through so much. To, to, and, and, and sometimes you be like, dog, you've been, you been saying that by the last 10 years. I mean, come on. But I think sometimes we don't, we don't hear ourselves. We, we appreciate people listening to our sad stories. And, and you got to change how you talk. I'm, I'm not just in conflict anymore. I got to start seeing myself in a position of victory. So first, these young men understood what? The cross, what it meant, and they were able to activate their faith. The second thing that was unique in that of them becoming an uh, overcomer to the wicked one is because the word of God abided in them. See, it was two things I'm sharing with you, two. The word, and this, right now, at that point, this is where Christians mess up. Because Satan enjoys when the church is ignorant in the word. As much as he can keep you out of the word, he got you. Look, look, look at what's getting ready to happen. First Sunday in, 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 in November, the second Sunday, and third Sunday at 5.30, we're doing a conference on, on how to develop an effective prayer life. Watch our saints. Watch them. Just watch them. People, people have all kinds of excuses on, on why they can't, you know, uh, what had happened. And it's always... That sad story.
story. Woo. But we can find everything else in the world to do. And, and your pastor has gotten to a level now. I, I kind of look at you foolishly. I, I mean, I don't really want to hear it. Okay? Because when you got an opportunity to feast on the word, you turn it down. But I ain't going to hell because you don't want to eat. He told me to teach. So here's a question. How do I hide the word in me? Look at what the text said now. They were overcomers of the wicked one because of what? The, they hid the word in them. Okay? Very first thing, first step is to read it. Read it. Okay? And I'm not trying to be funny. We put Bibles on every pew in this church. Every pew. The church didn't have to pay for the Bibles. I think we, we I had maybe about 400. Yeah, about four or 500 Bibles. Put them on the pew. And one by one. One by one. You get a raggedy Bible on the pew and where some 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 parents just let child just take and just tear it up, cover off the Bible. There. Okay, we we don't we don't read the word. I mean, you don't have to. I don't know what 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 it's gonna take to get into this, but I would hate for trouble to make you come this way. Trouble would make. Trouble, baby, will make you read morning, noon, and night. <laughs> I'm, I'm here to tell you. But you got to read it. And, and our folk, this, this is what really bothers me. This is why uh, bro, Brother Shelley and I enjoy going up to East, uh, East Lake Elementary to teach the young folk. You got to get them while they're young. Got to get them while they're young. Because our kids don't even have a, a, a mentality to want to read. It's all about being on the phone. And that bothers me because now this is just obsolete. Hello, y'all. I, I look at the attendance at life application, breaking down the word, and there's a handful of folk. And it's been a handful for God knows how long. But our folk ain't hungry. It's that, but I can tell you what. If I switched things up and took out life application at 930 and, and got blessed to bring a superstar, yes, that will sing every Sunday morning, house will be packed. Let, let me say uh, first Sunday, uh, next Sunday we're going to have Yolanda Adams. Wall to wall Negroes be up in here. And I'm not talking about 11 o'clock. I'm talking about 9. But bro, they be here at 9. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's not about the excuses we render. Those are just excuses. People do what people want to do. And I had to come to grips with that. So I, I kind of stopped saying too much. Because, I mean, I can't, I can't, I don't know what else to do. I invite. Uh, Brother Shelley makes it plain and simple. And folk ain't hungry. But we ain't going to lose our reward. So the first step is to do what? Read it. The second thing is by meditating on it. You can't meditate on that which you don't read. See, you, you got to. And, and, and listen, y'all, it's, it, it, it's so much. You, you don't have to have the King James Version. Black folk thought that. You know, that's the Lord's Bible. I was like, come on, y'all. But that's, 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 that was our, our mentality. Yeah, it, you know, and we walking around and don't even talk the language the Bible is written in. How art thou? That's not what we say. But we didn't take the time to even study King James. 
That was a translation of the word of God. And you got some church in there. You ain't bringing nothing up in here other than the King James. But you got to meditate. See, God will speak to you in the middle of the night. When you meditate on something, he, he will. Have you ever just, he just wake you up. And, and I'm talking about up. I'm not talking on your way. I'm talking about up. Just energized. As if somebody walked in the room and just touched you and you got up. So you got to read it. You got to meditate on it. And by practicing it. See, if you can't practice it, it does you no good to read and meditate on. But John says that they will overcome us because the word of God abided in them. Now, got a good point to end all this. I told you from the very beginning, Satan's mission is not temptation. I didn't say he does not tempt. Please understand. But that's not his ultimate mission. Let's go to James chapter 1 verse 14. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. I'm going to explain something now. You, we saw it, now I'm going to explain it. Satan's primary purpose is to work through a religious system. If he can get you off track with the truth of the word of God, he got you. Does it not, now, does everybody... See, he wants to send as many as he can to hell. Okay? But he's smart enough to know temptation alone ain't enough. Y'all with me? So people get into, I was driving the other day. And I sometimes have to look at myself and go, ooh, am I mentally off? I, I was angry. I was going down these different streets in the city. And I said, we're sitting back arguing and bickering over denominations. And God ain't a bit more stood in that man-made mess. And we missing the mark. And I said to myself, I wonder how many folk come to New Horizon called Baptists is sitting out there. I thought about that. I thought about it. I did. I thought about it. I said, are we really up in here because we want to brag about being Baptist? And, and going to heaven ain't about your denomination. But you see how Satan operates? That's, that's his mission. See, if he can keep us divided, and, that, and that's exactly what denominations do. And y'all been around me a long time now. I don't teach denominations. I'll stand here and tell you I'm Holy Ghost filled. Five baptized. But those were terms used by Pentecostal folk. See, my, my whole purpose, who, who told you you own a language? There's going to always be some differences, but Satan's mission is to keep, you know, uh, I don't go over there, there. They, they ain't Baptists. So when we get to heaven, do y'all honestly think Baptist folk going to be here and Methodist people going to be there and Presbyterian? That, that ain't even in the word. You, you, you got to know the Lord personally. For yourself. You got to be washed in the blood. You got to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And you got to know that you know him. With no hesitation. That's what I'm talking about. 
I got one cheerleader over there. But, but you got to understand, he works through a religious system. He ain't stud. I mean, I'm not saying he won't tempt you, but he, he, he tempts people who are, who are trivial. They, they're on this level down here. When you can get past knowing I'm, I got enough word in me, that that word I used to do, I ain't worried about doing it no more. You got something going. But you got to get some word in you. And see, this when I hear saints saying, uh, I've been, been wrestling with him. No, no, no. You ain't in no, you, you got to get into this right here. And stay there. Stay there. Keep saying to yourself, I got to eat a little more of that word. You can't get it. Just like you eat every day, you got to have some word in you every day. And folk don't believe that. I, I don't even know what, what you might do to, to meditate. Sometimes I have to watch myself. I, I sit up and, and just meditate on the word, and it won't be long. I'm just sitting in my chair crying. Ain't nothing wrong. But his presence, just, just sitting there saying, thank you, sir. Just, just, just thank you. You're such an awesome God for for old messed up person like me. Second Corinthians chapter ten, verses three, four, and five. Listen to this: For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk against according to the what flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For what pulling down strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of whom? Of Christ. Same thing. We, we walked through this just a moment ago. But that's the point I'm trying to make y'all grasp. Do, do you not get what I'm saying? I'm so crazy that I believe if all the saints of the church came and feasted on the word, God will move. Now, I'm, I'm sorry if, if, if y'all think I'm cuckoo. Next month, if we commit ourselves, I ain't got to go next month. If we started out Sunday morning hungry for the word, hungry, and, and, and honestly opened up and let him take charge. And put issues before him, God will do some things. But we are losers because we don't get in the word. People walk away, life defeated, life destroyed, no hope, no joy, because we don't get in the word. See, see, the word will hold you. All you got to do is just keep hearing him say, but I will supply your every need. When you keep hearing that over and over again, you will know your supplier. <laughs> now, now, that doesn't mean he going to just drop it right there. But you have an attitude of knowing is really not when he does it. It's knowing that he's going to do it. You can wake up every morning with a whole different, brand new outlook on life. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13, 14, and 15. For such are false pro apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. Stay, stay right there. Stay, stay right there. And, and all I'm talking about is, is performing. That's what I'm talking about. It, it doesn't, Satan, Doc, is, is, he's moved. He, he's elevated himself in, in using the, the pulpit as, as a place where, where, where now if, if people don't shout and scream and holler and, and run, we, 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 we ain't had no church. That's scary. That, that's very scary that we, 
we fail to understand. I'm a worshiper before I walk in the door. I'm a worshiper. That's my attitude. I come because of what God has already done. Not, not what I'm praying to get. I'm in here because of what he has already done. So that means if he does not do anything else, I'm still a worshiper. I hope I'm making some sense. If, if I'm praying and he don't answer that prayer right there, I'm still a worshiper. Okay? I, I love a good amen every now and then. But I can tell you what I can't stand. I, I can't stand a constant flow. If, if, if that was a constant flow of, of emotionalism all the time, I'd be a little concerned. I really would. Because you do need to get somewhere and be still and get some instruction. But after you get it, jump up. See, that's where we miss. We, we get the instruction and don't do nothing. We just sit. And boy, that just boils over me. Because I'd be like, okay, now y'all ain't got enough word now? Am I, do y'all hear what I'm trying Satan is busy, okay? And he's got a lot of folk, all this talk about millenniums. As if this has changed because they millenniums. Now, please, please understand. I, I'm, oh, well, don't y'all hate me? <laughs> I, I know y'all are. No, you ain't no child. You old millenniums. <laughs> but, how you present something is one thing, but it still got to be Jesus. Look, look, look at what we got. We got screens up here. But the word ain't going to change because we got screens. It's the same word. In other words, collard greens are still collard greens. Now, you can put as much seasoning as you want on it. You can make them hot, chilly. But the greens. So, Sir Paul, uh, g- give me First Timothy chapter four, verses one and two. Did I, that, yes, he says, "Now the Spirit expressly says." that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. I'm going to end on that. We, we just got to, but that, that's my closing point. If you are not properly fed the word, you are slip. And what's happening to folk today, they slipping. Because it's all about, I want to feel good. And coming to church sometimes has nothing to do with feelings. Got me? Because when that word cuts me, I don't feel good. Sometimes the word makes you cry. Because when God tells you to go and bless your enemy, that ain't something you shout off for. That'd be like, huh? Wait, wait. Did did you hear me? (laughs) I mean, come on. Am I making sense to everybody? That That don't make you jump. That makes you step back. Because the first thing you're going to say is, uh-uh, uh, I don't know them like that. I mean, <laughs> for real? That, that makes me examine myself. <sighs> Speaking lies. Watch him now. Ah, give me that second verse. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their own conscience seared with a hard iron. That's why I, I want the church rooted and grounded. Yeah. That means after the next, the next month, our folk ain't got no being to walk around telling folk, pray for me. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be funny. If we would come where we're being taught how to do something, you ain't got to depend on nobody. Right. You ain't got to wait on the deacons. No. Some things you just do yourself. Okay. So these young men are spiritually mature and equipped 
in the word of God to the point that God could use them. Why? They were overcomers of the wicked one. And every church needs some young folk, not in age, spiritually experienced. But when everybody up in here wearing pampers, everybody sagging, everybody needs to change. Something wrong somewhere. Everybody whining. She don't like me. Okay. No, they didn't speak. Okay. I mean, you have to get to a point. That kind of stuff is, is trivial. That's trivial. Y'all be surprised sometime on, on, on Sunday. And I get tickled. You know, I, I can tell the ones that avoid me. They, they, they don't want to act like it, but they're short in the action. So rather than get anywhere close to me, they just kind of go around. You know, I mean, it, it doesn't even bother me. That was back in the day when I was young in ministry, my heart be broken. I don't care now. And I'm not trying to be funny. You got to grow up to a point that stuff like that don't bother you no more. You know, I'm too busy fighting Satan. I ain't got time for that little trivial mess. Okay? You might die tonight. Okay? That's on you. All right. God bless y'all. Um, uh, we finished the, the young men. So now our mission, um, I know I got the fathers. So that's. That, and, and we're dealing with it not necessarily in the order in which John has written, but in the level of spiritual growth. Now, don't lose sight of the stages. Children, young men, fathers. Okay? Don't, don't lose sight of that now. <laughs>